for the simple harmonic oscillator, I want to show how using the equations of motion, we derive the time dependent function of x to be an amplitude times cosine omega t plus v, and how the solution for omega comes out of this. We do it by what could be called the anal extraction method, because you pull the answer out of someone's butt, but then verify that it's right. Let me give you an example. Let's say we have 3x plus 5 is equal to 23. We could solve that algebraically. We know how to do that. But let's just, let's just pick an answer. What if x is equal to 10 per second times e to the negative t over tau, where tau is some time constant? So what do we do? We substitute this in, and we get 3, or 30 per second, times e to the negative t over tau plus 5 is equal to 23. And that you could do a number of things. Say, well, what if t is 0? This comes out to be 30. 30 plus 5, 35 per second is not equal to 23. The units are wrong. Everything is wrong. Okay, so this can't be true. How about if we try x equals 1? We put 1 in there. Uh, 3 times 1 is 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 doesn't work. How about if we try x is equal to 6? 6 times 3 is 18, plus 5 is 23. Ah, that must be right. Okay, so let's see what equation of motion we have for a mass on a spring, and how we can get the answer that this is what x is equal to. We have this system in equilibrium. This is where x equals 0. This is positive x, negative x. When I displace this, there's a force on it due to the stretching of the spring. And so I know that this force is equal to kx, where k is a spring constant. But there's also gravity in here. And so I can write the vector sum of the forces, because here it's zero, because we're in equilibrium. But I know if I move it in this direction, some delta x, then there'll be a force on the spring in order to make that happen. And that force is equal to mass times acceleration. And these are both vectors. Now there's a very important addition I must make. Because force is equal to kx refers to the force on the spring. If I move this down, I need to pull down on it. But we're looking at the force on the mass. The mass pulls down on the spring in order to elongate it. But the spring here is pulling up on the mass. And so, these are equal and opposite forces. So the force that the spring puts on the mass is exactly the opposite of the force that the mass puts on the spring. Let's see if this makes sense. Because if I displace this in the negative direction, I need the acceleration to be positive. And it is. If I push this in the positive direction, I see the acceleration is going to be negative. I like it. So we have our equation of motion right here. But we have two unknowns. Ah, except acceleration, I know, is the second time derivative of displacement, right? Velocity as a function of time is equal to dx dt. And acceleration as a function of time is equal to dv dt. But if you put this in, you get d squared x dt squared. And so I can write this now. Mass times the second time derivative of displacement. And I can write this. So the second time derivative of x is now equal to negative k over m times x. So how do we solve this equation? Ah, let's use our anal extraction method. How about we use 8? That worked last time. The second time derivative of 8 is 0. And that would be equal to 8k over m. No, 0 is not equal to 8k over m. That doesn't work. How about we try 10 per second e to the negative t over tau? Okay? We take the second time derivative of this, and we get 10 over tau squared s e to the negative t over tau. Right? It's the second time derivative. And so, so when we put that in, it's pretty nice because we have this on both sides. But we have another problem where some positive constant, 
would have to be equal to some negative constant. So that's no good. That's no good. But we're getting closer. How about we look at what, when you take the second time derivative, do you get a negative constant? And we know that's sinusoidal, right? And so we try this. Let's just try this function. X is equal to some amplitude times cosine omega t plus phi or theta, some constant. Well, then what's the velocity? The first time derivative is you bring down your constant, and then the derivative of cosine gives you negative sine, and then you have to use a chain rule and take the derivative of the argument, and that brings out an omega. Okay, great. So now we take the second time derivative. When we take the derivative of this, we keep our constant, and the derivative of sine is cosine. And then we take the derivative of the argument, and we get another omega to come out. I like it because I can see that this is the same as x of t. And now I can put this in and see what I get. Acceleration is the second time derivative of x. So I can put this in. Then we can see these two cancel. And this will be true if and only if omega squared is equal to k over m. Or omega, the oscillation frequency, is equal to the square root of k over m. This is a very important mathematician to pay attention to. The words are, this is important eigenvalue that comes out when we put the eigenfunction into our equation. So does this make sense? That omega should grow with a higher spring constant and be decreased with a larger mass. So what have we seen? If we increase the mass, the acceleration will drop and the frequency will be reduced. And here I increase the spring constant, watch. First, you can see this is oscillating at about one hertz. And then I put my hand around the spring and I grab it in the middle right now. By making the spring stiffer, shorter, you can see that the frequency goes up. Let's check units. K is equal to newtons per meter and M is a kilogram. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So the meters and the kilograms cancel, and I have per second squared, square root, yes, per second. I like the units. So we can just, for instance, check. This thing goes up and down at a frequency of about one hertz. One, two, three, four. So we know omega is about 2 pi times the frequency, or about, you know, 6.3 radians per second. Let's see if that makes sense. K was about 8 newtons per meter, and the mass was 0.2 kilograms. The newtons per meter kilogram gives me per second. Now the math, 8 divided by 0.2 is like 8 times 5 is a 40. Square root of 40 is, yeah, like 6 squared is 36, so close enough, close enough to 6.3 per second. I like it. One more thing. We want to verify that using this equation of motion conserves energy for us. And if we remember, the total energy is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy in the spring, which is 1 half mv squared plus one-half kx squared, where x is not the amplitude, x is the actual displacement, because that's how much energy you have stored in your spring. And now we just substitute this in, we're going to have to square the displacement, and we're going to have to square the velocity. So I'll tell you where this is going. We're going to have sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 with no time dependence. 
The problem is we need these to be the same. And we can show that it's true because omega is equal to the square root of k over m, the solution to the equation, and omega squared is then equal to k over m. So we have an omega squared here, and then that, that gives us one half m times negative squared is positive. I get k over m x squared, and these cancel, and now I have one half kx squared and one half kx squared here. And so this is equal to one half kx squared times sine squared omega t plus theta naught plus cosine squared omega t plus theta naught. Okay, so this is one, and we can see now that the total energy is always, independent of time, the total energy is one half kx squared. What's x? x is a displacement. No, I made a mistake. This is the amplitude, right? I was sloppy. Why is that important? Because this is what we always knew. This is the amplitude. This is when you get to your maximum displacement, all the energy is in the spring potential energy. And that's going to be 1 half k amplitude squared. Great. So we showed how using dynamics, that force is equal to mass times acceleration. We can write down the equation of motion of the oscillating mass. We can use the anal extraction method to guess at the solution function. We can put it in and then find out that we get this as a requirement. And we can show that using this conserves energy.